Hello, this is a repeat of the presentation that was given at Analytica 2022. Uh, the topic is nitrosamine analysis using the Aleutia TEA thermal energy analyzer, the past, the present, and the future. So now what I'm gonna be discussing today uh, is what are nitrosamines, how are they formed, the areas of concern for their formation, and of course, the Aleutia technology, the TEA, that we have for both total and speciated analysis of nitrosamines. So nitrosamines were first discussed in the 1950s, so they've been a problem that we've known about for a long time. Um, they, the majority of them have been found to be carcinogenic, uh, and also many being organ-specific carcinogens. Um, the most common uh, problem in the pharmaceutical industry is NDMA, um, and hundreds have been identified and investigated since the 1950s. So what are nitro uh, nitrosamines? So um, they're a group of compounds containing a nitroso group bonded to a deprotonated amine or to the layman, uh, two nitrogens bound to each other with one of them being double bonded to an oxygen and R1 and R2 can be any other uh, molecule. So these are a, just a selection of the volatile nitrosamines, of course NDMA being the, the common one for pharmaceutical industry. These are tobacco-specific nitrosamines. Uh, these are the four main ones that occur. The cosmetic industry is most concerned with Endella due to the use of trolamine as a pH buffer. In rubber production, morpholine is used in the vulcanization process, which uh, results in the formation of NMOR. So how are nitrosamine formed? Uh, an amine reacting with a nitrating source. Uh, the amine is typically a, a secondary amine. Uh, the nitrating source can be a nitrite, a nitrosyl, or a nitrate. Uh, certain conditions such as acidic conditions or elevated temperatures have been uh, found to um, increase the rate of nitrosamine formation. For the pharmaceutical industry, as you can see, they, they have a, a lot of concern. Uh, you know, does the API contain an amine? Uh, are secondary amines used in the synthesis of the API? Uh, could secondary amines be present in, as an impurity, uh, even to raw material? Does the water used in the manufacture contain nitrosamines? Similarly with, with solvents, if you use recovered solvents in your processes, then some recovery processes don't remove the nitrosamines, uh, even down to the packaging. And as I said, with, with the storage of the pharmaceutical product, um, what's the shelf life before the likely nitrosamine formation has occurred and at what temperature? So this is the Aleutia TEA, the Thermal Energy Analyzer. This is the heart, shall we say, of Aleutia's uh, nitrosamine system. And this is a pyrolyzer. So the TEA is a nitroso, nitro and nitrogen chemiluminescence detector and is used in many industries globally. So this is a generic setup for either a GC or HPLC system. Uh, the column effluent enters a pyrolyzer where it is heated uh, at temperatures of in excess of 500 degrees C. Uh, this will break off the uh, nitrosol group which is then detected within the TEA. 
This is just a photograph of a typical um, GCTEA system. As you can see, we have the Elusha PAL, which performs the injection into any GC. Uh, the pyrolyzer interfaces into a GC uh, through the transfer line port. So this can be interfaced on almost any commercially available GC. Within here it's heated and then the nitrosol group enters the TEA. So this is the um, generic um, reaction, the equations for the reactions for the uh, TEA system. As you can see, the nitrosamine is heated, which releases the nitrosyl radical, which is then enters the TEA where it is reacted with ozone to form an excited state of nitrogen dioxide, um, which when the nitrogen dioxide relaxes, it releases a photon of light and that is what is detected by the, uh, by the TEA. So this shows the sensitivity that can be achieved using the TEA. Uh, this test is performed on every instrument that leaves the uh, Aleutia factory. As you can see, these are eight of the most common uh, volatile nitrosamines that are uh, injected. And 20 picograms per component is injected. So the TEA can also be used for total nitrosamine analysis. So rather than speciating uh, using a GC or HPLC system, you have one peak. OK, so we're using a chemical reaction to uh, release the nitrosyl radical for detection. In this state, then the TEA is a molar detector for the nitrosamine, uh, as you can see, one milligram per liter of each of these nitrosamines has a different mass of the nitrosyl group. Uh, so yes, it is a molar detector at this stage. This is a generic layout for our glassware system for um, total nitrosamine analysis. So we have a reaction vessel that will contain our hydrogen bromide reagent. This is heated to reflux conditions to release the nitrosyl group. Uh, gases enter the condenser, uh, which crashes out the uh, reaction mixture. This then passes through a cold trap to further try and prevent any aqueous uh, samples entering the TEA system. So the nitrosyl group then enters the TEA system for detection, as discussed earlier. And this is a photograph of the um, glassware system that we supply. So similar to before, we use a chemical reaction. So in this case, the hydrobromic acid is producing the secondary amine, releasing the nitrosyl radical and bromine. The nitrosyl radical enters the TEA, reacts with ozone to form the excited nitrogen dioxide molecule which relaxes to release a photon of light, which is then detected. So these are typical standard analyses um, using our TEA glassware system. Um, typically, customers inject between 50 and 100 microliters of sample, uh, but up to one mil could be used, uh, but then you are limited by the the volume of your reaction vessel as to how many samples can be analyzed. In an effort to automate the uh, chemical stripping reaction, um, the Aleutia PAL has been used. So 
this system can be used to both extract uh, samples as well as perform the chemical strip reaction or just to perform the chemical strip reaction. So for the chemical strip reaction, we place the sample in the sample trays with the reaction mixture. The robot moves the sample to the vortex to mix it thoroughly. It's then moved to the heated agitator where it is heated under to reflux conditions again to allow the uh, reaction. The samples are placed back in the sample tray to be allowed to cool and then injected in the TEA inlet. So the advantages of this is it's a significantly faster analysis um, and it can be uh, run unattended. Uh, it also reduces the amount of um, handling of hazardous chemicals and certainly under uh, reflux conditions, therefore improving uh, safety of workers within the laboratory. Uh, unlike previously, also we have discrete analyses. So uh, a sequence table would be set up for analysis, just like on any other GC type system. Um, so there's, there's not one continual chromatogram containing multiple samples. They are each individual samples. This is a photograph of uh, the static headspace injection of the nitrosyl radical into the TEA inlet. This is just a slide showing that uh, sample interleaving can be used. This will increase the throughput of samples. For this system, our initial dwell time was 12 minutes, but then there was a sample analyzed every four minutes thereafter. This is initial data where we were using one mil of sample. So as I said earlier, tip, uh, samples are typically between 50 and 100 microliters. So this was performed in a 10 mil headspace vial. So we were achieving better sensitivity than what we would typically see with our glassware system. Here is the resultant calibration curve. and the system is reproducible. M must be noted that this is an external standard system. Uh, there is no way we can add an internal uh, standard as we are only achieving one peak for the total nitrosamine. So this is early development data where we are using 14 mils of sample instead of one mil of sample. So this has significantly improved our sensitivity, both from the increase in sample volume, but also in reducing the headspace volume. So that's the volume of, of gas within the headspace vial. Therefore, we are injecting a greater proportion of the sample for uh, analysis. Now, the green sample is 5 ppb of NDMA. That's what I would call a peak. The black is 2.5 ppb, but that is also does also have a signal to noise of greater than four to one. So statistically, uh, the limit of detection is 2.5 ppb, but personally, I'd say the limit of detection is 5 ppb. Uh, we have already improved this limit of detection by further optimizing the conditions within the TEA. Thank you for your time. Thank you for watching this presentation. If you have any questions regarding this, please feel free to contact Alusha using the link below. Thank you.